This is our day. Let's go and get them. It's time. I want to go to that first game, like right now. The Friday Night Blitz is back. The best rivalries, top recruits, and all the fun that comes along with high school football. Tonight, most of the games don't count. Come on, let's go. But try telling that to the guys in uniform. We bring you highlights from around the area and a preview of the season to come. The Friday Night Blitz is on. This is Action Sports Jack's Friday Night Blitz. Sponsored by Jaguars Prep. Built by DreamFinders Homes. Students, students, I want it crazy tonight. I want you yelling. I want you screaming. Oh uh, yeah, football is back and that means pep rallies are back, including at our newest school in town, Tokoy Creek. The Toros unveiling a beautiful wrap on the Sheriff's vehicle, having some fun this afternoon getting ready for their first football season. It's not our first rodeo and hey, Friday night, that scene right there, that's what it's all about at every school all over the area. We have fun here every Friday night in the Blitz. So happy to be back. I'm Brett Marco yes. along with Stuart Weber. And I have always loved this kickoff classic edition of the show because we get to kind of ease ourselves into the season. The games may not count on the ledger, but the highlights, they look just as pretty. So let's get it started. A few of the stories still to come include a behind the scenes look at our area's newest team. A breakdown of our game of the week schedule for the fall to come. We'll preview our local 8A district and one taking a step up in competition. And players trying to find some sort of normalcy after a year that was anything but. But first, let's go ahead and start with a game that actually counts. North of the border, we're talking about Camden County, home to start the season against Atlanta area Columbia High, not Lake City, Columbia High. 21 nothing. Wildcats up in the second quarter. Columbia going to punt it, but high snap, Wildcats recover. Gary Loden leading his team under the center, snaps the ball, looks in the end zone, finds Ian Peterson. Wildcats go up 28 to nothing. Columbia with the ball again. And it's another high snap and another Wildcats recovery. Welcome to they, zero. They would add three points after that. So what will Columbia do? They tried the pass game. No, nope, that doesn't work either. Zachary Andrew interception. Wildcats run away 31 to nothing. They call it after a lightning delay. Well, big news in Kingsland this offseason when we found out that Jeff Heron was coming back to Southeast Georgia. Heron led the Wildcats to three state championships and has won at just about every other stop he's had in his coaching career. Now he's back at Camden County looking to return the Cats to the success they enjoyed in his last stint as the head coach. Spring practice, it was like we're still getting used to how they talk, how they uh, what teaches the plays and stuff. But now that we're about to get into the season, everything's going smoothly over the summer. We've talked, we've had a lot of film meetings, and everything's going smoothly now. Hey, one more from Georgia tonight, Pierce County and Brunswick. The Pierce won this thing last year on the way to a state title, but that must not have sat well with the Pirates. Already up two scores when Leon Charlton is off to the races for a long score. Brunswick picks up the W on a Friday night, 21 to 13. Hey, it's going to take some time to get used to seeing Riverside on the schedule, but say hello to the Riverside Generals. OJ Small, still the head coach. They still play in the backyard. The only thing that's changed is the school name on the jersey. Riverside's debut coming up against a strong Bartram Trail squad in tonight's kickoff classic. Slow moving first half, though. The Bears defense comes up with a big play. High general snap turns into a fumble recovery for Ezekiel Romero. Still no score in the first quarter. Cole Zara drops back on fourth down. He cannot find an open receiver trying to make something happen. Cannot. He is dropped for a 14-yard loss. That is a turnover on down. Second half picked up for the home team. They go on to win 28-7, to does Riverside. Two more heavyweights meeting up Oakley. Fat the Bowl School. New face at QB for the Bulldogs. Hello, DJ Moore. DJ throws a dime down the field. Oh, connects with pretty. Come on, Miller. Look at that in stride. Oh. Touchdown, Bowls. Beautiful on both ends of it. Down 13-7 on the ensuing possession. Oakley's attempt to respond. Cut short by an interception. Kamani Wilson getting it done for the Bulldogs. That turned into more Bowls points. Bulldogs looking good on both sides of the ball to start the season. They get the win over Oakleaf tonight. We bring it to Marcel Robinson now for more on players getting a first real chance to experience an offseason with their coaches after a topsy-turvy 2020. 
Guys, we enjoy many of the things that we love about high school football, returning the fans in the stand, the kids on the field, the energy just at an all-time high. Let's not forget that a year ago, this was not the case. Of course, because of COVID, many of these players' summer and spring workouts were canceled or limited, to say the least. And some of our first-year head coaches came into something that they didn't necessarily expect. This time around, the second-year coaches are enjoying a little bit more flexibility and freedom, and that's going to show right here on the field, according to the players. It built up some chemistry with our coach, and and, I mean, it's probably a learning experience for him, too. You know, he's just starting to be a head coach, and it's built up a lot of chemistry. Yeah, of course, when he got here, it was some bumps and bruises, but he's a really easy coach to work off of and actually answer questions for it and really understand why I'm doing certain things. That weight room, weight room is something serious, especially with the program that we have. We actually were a real program. Like, me coming in for my first two years, it wasn't really like that. Coach for our head coach has really helped us a lot and be, be us, like, man, on the field and off the field. So that really helps our community and everything as well. As we spoke to many of the coaches, they reiterated the same thing, having the opportunity in spring and summer this time around to get their hands on the kids and really build that team chemistry and camaraderie. Well, that's going to be an immeasurable benefit when they get out here to play on the football field. At the Bowl School, Marcel Robinson, Action Sports Jax. Hey, go give Marcel a follow on the Twitters at Marcel A.S. Jax is where to go if you want to join Mr. Robinson's and neighborhood. see a lot of selfies as well. Lots of selfies. The theatric phase and error begins for Fletcher as the Senators alum leads his team against Creekside. And the Senators are down 14-3 in the third. Marcellus Tate throws a bomb to Leger Jones inside the Knights' 10-yard line. Saw a flag come down somewhere in there. Noah Taylor puts a bow on that. He runs right up the middle for Fletcher's first touchdown of the night. Fletcher would end up winning 16 to 14. How about last night? Sandalwood Saints welcoming in Spruce Creek. Terry Parker there as well, part of a jamboree. Didn't take long for the offense to show up to the party. Chris Calhoun up top, wide open. Khalil Ward connects for the big play. Sandalwood looking good in their final tune up before the regular season gets going. The game of the week, sponsored by Whataburger. I just showed you Fletcher and Sandalwood on the road. Next week, they meet at the beach in our first game of the week matchup of the season. It's the Battle of the Ditch. We cannot wait. In fact, we cannot wait for this entire game of the week schedule that we have set in motion. Well, really, Stuart Weber has set uh -huh. in motion. It's the wall that says it all. And what it says is this might be the best lineup for game of the week in the history of the Friday Night Blitz. That's the plan. That's certainly the plan. <laughs> it was a big jigsaw puzzle to put it together. No repeats and some of the best rivalry games all across the area. Really excited. I mean, Trinity Christian Bowls. You got Reigns and Rebald in their Saturday clash. Creekside and Bartram Trail. And Riverside Columbia has been one of the best yes. rivalries from, you know, unorthodox rivals. They've just been in the same district for a few years, and they are close every time they play. So really excited about all these games we have featured this year. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. We'll take you each and every week again. It starts next week. Sandalwood and Fletcher, week number one, oh, our yeah. game of the week right here on the Friday Night Blitz. More game action, Weber. Let's get to it. All right, how about it? Rebalt and First Coast at the shipyard. The Bucks. Larry Edwards gets the snap looking downfield. He'll find Van Adams Jr. How does he catch that? Who knows? Sets him up at the one yard line. Where, as you can see, goal line formation, and it's a QB sneak. Larry Edwards with the touchdown. The Bucks take the lead at the end of the first half. Marty Lee and the Bucks might be one to watch this year. Fleming Island has consistently been one of the best in Clay County the last few years, hosting Westside tonight on a beautiful night. A little hot, <laughs> but it was still a nice one. Less than five minutes before the half, Golden Eagles trying to extend their 14-7 lead. Hey, the QB chucks gets to his receiver. That'd be a Fleming Island first down. This looks like we got to update the rosters, don't we? Now the Wolverines will the ball try to drive it down the field, tie the game before the half. That will be a Golden Eagles sack. Update those rosters, coaches, if you don't have them in just yet. Hey, this is the end goal for every team in our area, right? A state title. Last year, Trinity Christian Conquerors and Bishop Snyder Cardinals able to raise a trophy at the season's end. The road to repeat for Trinity will be a little different this year as they drop to Class 2A. We're also still not sure where the state championship will be contested this year. They've bounced around as of late from Orlando to Daytona to Tallahassee. We do know the dates at least. Classes 1A, 2A, and 3A are set for December 9th through the 11th. The rest of Florida's classifications will be up a week later Thursday, the 16th through Saturday, the 18th. As for Georgia, the venue is set. And so is the schedule. December 9th through the 11th, the best from the GHSA will take over the old Turner Field, now Center Park Stadium, the home of the Georgia State Panthers, Stuart. 
Yeah, we just said the Conquerors. Well, they were back in Tallahassee tonight where they won that title last year playing Rickards. Trayon Webb, he's going to be on the show a lot this year, folks. Touchdown for the talented junior running back. Also, keep an eye on Colin Hurley. He's just a freshman, but already making waves in recruiting. Xander Ross on the receiving end of this touchdown. Trinity going to be tough again this upcoming season. Yeah, a lot of big-time talent in this area. Still to come, more highlights from the field as well, including a team taking the field for the first time ever. But it's not... Home doesn't have a home field just yet. That story is coming up as we take you down to St. John's County. We are the Bartram Trail Bears, and this is a Friday Night Blitz. Everybody want to play Bartram until it's time to play Bartram. Come on. Yeah, baby, good to have the fans in the atmosphere at the high school football game. Some schools still on 100% capacity, but a high school Friday night feels like a high school Friday night. Olivia said that, that baby powder made it smell really good at the game <laughs> as yeah. they launched it into the air that's, for everyone. Well, that's probably better than what it did smell mm, like. Probably a little better. With 100 degree heat. Oof. Welcome back to the first week of the Friday Night Blitz. Brent Martineau and Stuart Weber, this is not smell-o-vision. No. This is an appetizer, though, folks. Full go next week on the Blitz with regular season games for the entire area. Yeah, and this preseason game in Northeast Florida is important for some programs like Ponte Vedra. Yeah. You got a new coach in town, but he is very familiar with Friday nights. Steve Price, the coach at North Florida Christian in Tallahassee, a very good 2A program who often faced UC in the playoffs. Now he's in charge of the Sharks. Mustangs on the move in the second. And that is Mandarin's Brett Buckingham going high to Karan Hayward, catches it deep in Shark territory. Very next play. There it is, Buckingham and a touchdown. How about that? Trey Jolly with the touchdown. Mandarin and Ponte Vedra. Two teams we'll keep an eye on all season long. All right, the Clay Blue Devils running out on the gridiron for the first time this year, hosting St. Augustine. It's a nice little matchup right here in a game that really doesn't count, but still, good test. First quarter, Yellow Jackets line up near the 20, fake a run up the middle, and then watch this pass right into the hands of the wide receiver. That's a touchdown for St. Augustine. Next up, the Blue Devils trying to tie it up. Billy Mobley uses his feet, rolls right. Throws it up for grabs, and Demorian Frazier Ooh. falls right into the end zone. Olivia Tassley was very proud of that play. Tweeted Said it was a good it. one. She tweeted about it. It was a good one. Handle the good, handle the bad. It's all about us. Okay, we don't look up the scoreboard till the end of 48 minutes. Is that the understanding? Yes, First ever game for Tokoy Creek, and let's give it to the fans. Wow. Check out the turnout at, at St. Augustine, the awesome. Toro's temporary home. Coach mentioned handling the good and the bad. Well, we'll start with the bad. Paxson went right down the field and scored. John Rentrope with a QB keeper. But hey, the good is an offense that was clicking right off the get-go. Dada Raglan and Wendell Dean. Two rushing touchdowns apiece in the first half. Look out for that duo all year long. The rushing attack of Tokoy Creek will be fun to watch. Over the past few years, we've taken an in-depth look at some of our local high school football programs in our Making of a Program segment. That includes the transition at St. Augustine from Joey Wiles to Brian Braddock, and then the great history and success of the Reigns Vikings. Well, this year, we're taking the name Making of a Program in a very literal sense as the Tokoy Creek Toros start from scratch. Each week we're going to tell a chapter of the Toros story from the building blocks to finally hitting the field at home on their actual campus. Let's start at the ground level. St. John's County is growing fast. More families means more kids and that creates a need for more schools. Nice, Bartram Trail, and Creekside all seeing enrollment steadily rise. So for the first time in 13 years, a new high school is popping up. And I do mean popping up. Tokoy Creek went from an old cow pasture to a high school full of Toros in a year and a half. This land that the school is on, you know, if you, uh, you know, drive within a mile you know, radius of this, you're going to see a lot of livestock. The man tasked with building the athletic department, Jeff Holland. The Toro is a very unique mascot. A former St. Augustine High School AD who knows this county inside and out. I've had a great opportunity to rely on 
you know, just my experience of uh, being in the business for 32 years and spent a lot of time on what we think is putting the right people in place. Starting a football team from scratch is a tall enough task. Holland is making 70 coaching hires, seeing new facilities built, and filling empty equipment rooms. You only get one chance to make a first impression. And uh, you know that has been something that we have spent hours and hours on, just making sure you know that things are the way that we want them to be. Hurdle number one, a football field that won't be ready until midway through the season. All part of the job in the making of a program. Next week, we're going to introduce you to the man hand-picked to lead the Toros, head coach Mike Kolakowski, who has some familiar names on the sideline with him this fall. That is next week on our Making of a Program as it continues on the Friday Night Blitz all season long. Well, if you want to watch previous editions of Making of a Program, you can do that. It's on our YouTube channel, Action Sports Shacks on ESPN 690 St. Augustine Reigns, and well, we'll be adding Tokoy Creek to the mix. Welcome into the Blitz Scoreboard Show. Hey, speaking of ESPN 690, next Friday night we begin season two of the newest high school show in town. Nothing else like it. It's the Blitz Scoreboard Show in conjunction with the Friday Night Blitz on the TV side. We're extending it this year a bit, 9 p.m. until 10.30. Scores, analysis, reaction on the radio side. But if you watch on the social media channels, That's where you'll see at. live action from some of the games, including some fun finishes. Think about it like the Red Zone Channel for high schools. Next Friday night, 9 o'clock on ESPN 690 social media platforms, and it leads right into the Friday Night Blitz on Fox 30 and CBS 47. Hey, Eagles View, Providence, Christ Church Academy with a three-team jamboree. Christ Church Academy got on the board first. It's the third and fourth quarters of the jamboree. Gray Saliba coming right at you. I thought he was coming right at me. Touchdown run, seven to nothing, Eagles lead. Hey, the player of the night had to be Tavio Tala. Had over 200 yards and five scores in two quarters against Eagles View. Then he had a few more touchdowns against Christchurch Academy. Over 400 yards and eight touchdowns on the night for him. Whoa. Look at the rough right there, Stuart. Yeah, get, he's, he's got like four, five speed. Preseason for him, too. Get down there. He did a great job, yeah. and so the Stallions bench was fired up. Yeah. Hey, number 15 for the Stallions. Hopes number 16 for the Jags gets folks excited for the season across all levels. Yeah, I feel like there's more of that buzz that football's back and people are ready to watch, go out and watch the Jags, but they can't forget that we got Friday Night Lights, too, so might see some more people out there soon. A kid can throw a football and he's better than his dad with a microphone we in his hand right guy. there. Hey, thinking about New Christ Church Academy head football coach and his family, Kareem Birch. They had a house fire late last night. The family lost most everything, coach told me. He told me they, he didn't sleep at all last night, and that wasn't anticipation of the game necessarily. Instead, just everything going on at home. He did have his team fired up and ready to go tonight. They'll got a feel in the football community. will help the Birch family in a big-time way. We're thinking of you, coach. Baker Sports with their biggest and best media day yet at TIAA Bank Field. There was a super turnout, giant collection of talent, and the top programs in football all here in one place. Action Sports Jack's Olivia Tassley was there for She joins us now to detail the schools in our largest classification and a newcomer who's stepping up in competition. It's one thing to go into football season with familiar rivals on the other side of the ball. It's another to step on the gridiron playing teams in the state's largest classification for the first time as district opponents. And that's exactly how the season's going to go for the Creekside Knights. This year, they will get their first taste of playing in the Class 8A after moving up from 7A. During high school media day, we caught up with the Creekside's head coach as well as one of his new rivals. And they both say Friday nights just got tougher. We can't sleep on Creekside. They're an insanely physical team. Man, we know how physical Sandalwood, Mandarin, and Bartram are. So, like, from that standpoint, there's no hiding. We're excited about it. We want to play the best kids, or the best teams with the best team, uh, players, because our kids want that opportunity, and we feel like that's where we are right now as a program. One program who has fought their way to the top are the Mandarin Mustangs. Ten years ago, they made a big jump from 6A to 8A. Fast forward to 2018, head coach Bobby Ramsey led the team to a state championship title, their first in school history. Now he returns for year five. One thing that we've learned that um, you know you can't just assume that the guys coming up who are going to be in those leadership positions are just going to do exactly what you would expect them to do. You have to teach them, you have to show them. But um, I think the staff has been together a while, so as far as as far as continuity, um, that's that's gone, that's been good, and, and that's that's nice as a coach, you know. You know what also is nice as a coach? Not playing a district game for the first month of football, especially when it comes to Creekside. After tuning up in the non-district games, they get a chance at their first district foe on September 17th. 
However, it will be against the Sandalwood Saints, a team that made a playoff run of its own last year. What a way to welcome into A Day. For Action Sports Jacks, I'm Olivia Tasley. Brent, Stewart, let's go back to you. Well, if you can't find the Blitz, you aren't looking hard enough, folks. We are everywhere, on TV, on the radio, on social media. The show streams on actionnewsjacks.com. Tell your family all over the globe, not just here in Jacksonville, that they can watch you and your highlights on Friday nights. Should I tell my grandmother in Holland she can watch it? Absolutely. It's probably a little late. We'll see if she wants you to shave or not. It's like 4 in the morning over there right now. But, you know, hey, hey. more to come on the Blitz, including the play of the week. Plus, one of the newest Jaguars looks back on his high school days. A Jags memory. Stay with us. That's next. This is the night, and it's a Friday night blitz. Don't sleep on us. Yeah, um, my senior year, it was the state semis versus Cardinal Gibbons. I think we went like seven overtime. It was a matchup, so we got it out. It was home game. Our last, our last time playing it at home, so. It was good. It was a memory. That, it, that really did say class of 2018. That was not a typo. Yeah, no. Tyson that's, that's when he graduated high school. I don't feel old usually, but yeah, that'll yeah. make anybody feel old. Oh, yeah. Old. <laughs> hey, more Jaguars memories all season long. Love the fact that we even have an alum of the Friday Night Blitz playing on the Jags roster and expecting to see his role increase in year two in the NFL. That, of course, Oakleaf grad Shaq Quarterman. Ah, Shaq and the rest of the Jags hit the road for some preseason action this week for the first time in a long time. It's a Monday night football matchup. Yeah, it's preseason, but it eh, still counts. It's Monday night football. Jags and Saints. You can see it on ESPN. The Player of the Week, sponsored by Whataburger. So starting next week, when the games start to count, we're going to be counting your votes for our Player of the Week. We'll provide four candidates after the games wrap up next Friday. Then it is up to you to vote, vote, vote for your favorite. And here's a cool new thing. Thanks to our partnership with Jaguars Prep. Good to have them on board. The winner of the Player of the Week vote will have the chance to attend Jaguars All Access on Thursday nights. Folks, this is what we call synergy, and it's a beautiful thing. Hope you can join us and be a part of it. Make for, sure you vote for First your... edition of All Access coming up. Next Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Get ready. Yeah. No doubt. So that's something new for this season, something that isn't new. All the amazing plays being made on the field tonight and every Friday night. Let's pick out our play of the week. Yeah, let's do it. Tavio Taller had an incredible night. This was about the only run that didn't go for a touchdown, but watch this. You ready? What? Oh, they love the hurdle. <laughs> Look at the sideline oh, when he did that. That was like it. a six-yard run. The guy ran for like 400 yards tonight, but they loved that one at Providence. A little slow-mo action. Tommy oh, Taller. Yeah. I mean, he was terrific tonight. Keep an eye on number seven all season long. Hey, we're going to have our Blitz edition of the Blitz. We go through <laughs> all the highlights quick, 1120 on both CBS 47 and Fox 30. We will see you then. Yeah, all right. Let's leave you with, uh, well, Band of the Week. Let's do it. Let's play some bands.